I guess this is the Halloween video for you guys. Agatha All Along is the newest show in the MCU and is now streaming on Disney Plus in its entirety. The finale aired earlier tonight and if you haven't seen that yet or the other episodes before that, this is going to be a review that is loaded with spoilers. At the end of WandaVision, Agatha Harkness was still trapped in the fictional reality of Westview that Wanda had created with her hex. However, after the events of Multiverse of Madness, Wanda's out of the picture right now and Agatha is able to get out. However, she gets out with no powers and she wants to reclaim her former glory and so she heads down the witch's road with a new coven and hopefully she'll get what she wants at the end of that road. And there are some trials to deal with before that. This was one of those things which felt like a great idea the moment they announced it. Anyone who has seen WandaVision will tell you that one of the best aspects of that was Katherine Hahn as Agatha. People really liked her in the role and wanted to see more of the character. And so naturally, a spin-off felt inevitable. It was a matter of when and not if. And it just is exciting in general because Katherine Hahn as an actress, I feel like there is only one person who can do what Katherine Hahn does as an actress, and that's Katherine Hahn. I have not seen too many actors in general have the kind of charisma and personality that they bring to a role quite like she does like you could have everybody else in the room and i've seen this in you know movies and shows with her she will do something completely different than anybody else surrounding her the only way you can counter that is if someone else had a very similar unique sense of you know comedy and the dramatic flair and they had a great choice in hand because Aubrey Plaza is the other actress who she's paired up against over here. And you couldn't possibly think of a better pairing to pull this off. And that's what immediately makes the show so fun. These two actresses are working really well off of each other, but also the entire cast in general is having a great time. This is one of those cases where every scene is made better just by the mere presence of these actors. And everybody from those two to Joe Locke to Patti LuPone to Sashir Zamata, everybody is doing a really, really great job of bringing these characters to life. And each one of them is given the time to flesh out these characters that they have. Because they're down this road and there are so many trials that they have to face, there is something customized about every single trial. It feels like it gives every character a chance to deal with their personal demons in the process and their personal issues. And so the solutions around the trials often will revolve around, you know, getting over something that has affected them in the past and finding their purpose. It's also very commendable because you have to remember you've not really met these characters before. You're going into this with first time introductions being done and then seeing the rest of the story play out. And it's able to make connections to those characters very quickly once the journey gets going. And I think that is to the show's success. Like everybody again gets a really great you know, chance to shine over here. There's a couple of standout characters that you get over here from Alice Wu, whose mother is the one who sang the Ballad of the Witch's Road. And there's a entire arc surrounding her where she's trying to figure out what her next step is and dealing with her you know, family curse that has existed for a long time. It leads to this great episode where they have to do this rock sing-along of the song. My favorite episode of the entire series is episode seven, where Lilia, played by Patti LuPone, has to face her trial and it's done with the use of tarot and she's trying to buy some time for the characters as well. It's a really great character study and easily the highlight and I thought Patty Lupone in that episode was outstanding. There's definitely a lot of talk about her going on about this episode and for good reason. She's she's really really that good in it. That way is that like I said it's like with these trial episodes you manage to get something for every character in the process. It's also to be commended how practical the show is. There is so many real sets and so many actual things happening. And while there is CGI used, it's never as a crutch. It's always there as a supplement to scenes. And now I know that sounds like a very simple positive to give to a show or anything of this kind, especially, you know, it's like, hey, you're doing the bare minimum of trying to make it feel as real. But at the same time, recently in the MCU, there's been 
put so much overemphasis on CGI that to use real sets and some real makeup effects and prosthetics and to try and feel as authentic as possible, it's something that I did like about it. Like every set felt very creatively unique in the process and it felt like something that was tangible and real, especially with the cast interacting with a lot of things on those sets. So just something that I wanted to point out. Eventually the storyline changes though, because we go from the trials which are still happening to focusing on how the characters are shaping that journey, especially when it comes to who Teen is. Joe Locke is introduced and this is a very mysterious character. He pops out of nowhere, he's in Agatha's house and he can't say his name. No one can find out what it is because he's got a sigil over him. And for a long time as he's going around, there's so many mysteries about Teen and you're wondering what's going on. And it's not until episode 5 that you find out that his name is Billy Maximoff, the one of Wanda's sons. And he's got powers of his own. But he's also not really Billy Maximoff. He is another kid who kind of gets morphed into Billy after an accident during the hex coming down in Westview. And what he has become is sort of an amalgamation of things. And so he has powers he doesn't understand, but he's also now got motivations in life that he's trying to see through to the end, including finding his brother. And that's something that is guiding him through on this journey. And so he needs Agatha to make that happen. And they don't trust each other really. But Agatha is still incredibly fascinated by him as a presence. Like, hey, your mom, she had some crazy skills. And I see a lot of her in you. But also it's like, she's not my mother. It, it's, it's a very interesting dynamic that they play. And I think Joe Locke does a really good job of playing that to the best of his abilities. There's a great episode surrounding him. I think it's episode six, which is entirely centered around how he gets those powers, getting an explanation about what happened in Westview to lead to this from Ralph Boner. Evan Peters once again shows up. So that's very fun. And I like how they managed to bring a lot of those pieces together. But then eventually the show has to answer for other characters like Agatha, because a lot of her past is a mystery, especially when it comes to what happened to her son, Nicholas Scratch. And here's another piece of great writing because both of these characters, as you learn their pasts and as you learn about their, you know, their abilities and what they can do, they're reshaping how you see the show. So whatever may have happened in at some point earlier on in another episode and you thought, that's kind of jarring, that doesn't make any sense, why would the character do this and that? Then when you see other scenes play out, especially towards the end with both Billy and Agatha, it feels like, oh, now that entire scene has a different context around it. And I feel like it's going to make re-watching Agatha all along a very fun experience because even though the first couple of episodes feel a little abrasive at times and a little scattered, when you see it again, it all sort of fits very nicely, especially when it comes to things that Lilia would be saying every now and then, Patty Lupone, because her entire life is out of sequence. So she's sort of living past, present and future at the same time. And so she'll say and do things that are happening that feel random in the moment, but then you'll connect it back to an earlier moment and you find out that it's all sorts of jumbled in the process. It's like her life is basically tenant. And the reveal of Rio, Aubrey Plaza, actually being death as someone who is after Agatha and wants to claim her at the end of this journey because time has run out when it comes to a lot of these characters. The way that entire storyline is also constructed and how it plays out is very effective, especially towards the end. And it also plays it out in a way that doesn't feel very chaotic. There is a certain sense of planning to the finale, which I really appreciate. And in fact, I would say that this is the first finale of this entire MCU Disney Plus roster that doesn't feel like it was done in a rush or with a massive CGI battle. There is a CGI skirmish of sorts that happens in the penultimate episode. But it's also interesting because the way the penultimate episode is played out, you almost expect that to be the last one. Because one of the biggest issues for a lot of these limited series on Disney Plus for me 
has been the fact that it feels like there is always this rush to end things. WandaVision, in fact, was a culprit of this. But that's not the case with Agatha all along. It plays its finale out very calmly. You get this little bit of a disagreement, I would say, between uh, Rio and Agatha. They have a bit of a fight. But after that, it's sorted out in a way that makes you know, sense to the narrative. These two loved each other. And eventually there is this moment between them where in order to keep Billy alive, Agatha decides to sacrifice herself and give herself over to death. It's a literal kiss of death that eventually kills her. But my favorite twist is also finding out that a lot of this wasn't something that was happening. In the case of The Road, there wasn't one. There was always a myth. The idea of the witch's road was something that Agatha used to get powers from other witches and become more powerful herself. And that was something that was used over the years post Nicholas Scratch's disappearance, her sons, after he is claimed by death. And so Billy's realization that he has sort of altered reality and he has made all of this happen and he's caused the deaths of some witches in the process like Lilia's or Alice's or even Mrs. Hart. But I like how they brought around Billy's character and also Agatha's character now that she's seen her entire arc to completion. In fact, one of the last things that she that she's worried about is that when Billy tries to banish her, she stops it because she is afraid of seeing Nicholas again and you know trying to talk to him about what, you know, happened. And there is this sense of closure that's given to everything that's around her as to why everything has ended up the way that it is. And so by the end of Agatha All Along, it started off as a show that I was a bit mixed on with the first couple of episodes and eventually it evolved into something that is very good. It's not entirely flawless. Some episodes could have been a little longer. There's a couple of times with subplots, like there's the Salem 7, which is after them, which doesn't really add up to much. Like those guys don't really feel like a threat after a while. In fact, they don't really feel like a threat at all. It feels like another thing that's sort of thrown in there as an obstacle for the most part. But beyond that, I was very happy with the show and I am excited to see where the story goes. I think there are a lot of different avenues that it could go down. Down the witch's road. I'm gonna give Agatha all along an A minus. Which is not the grade I was originally gonna give it. For a while over there, I was thinking it might be a B or B plus at most, but then towards the end, it really came around so nicely. I was like, you know what? You get the bump up. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you guys think of Agatha all along in the comments below. Let me know if you guys liked it or not. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe. Thank you very much for watching once again. And hope you guys enjoyed the show.